Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, sometimes hair, so if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also come and follow me on Instagram where I vlog a little bit, I post generally things that you're not going to see here over on YouTube. So yeah, my relationship with um, sunscreen has not been a good one. I know that I have to use it every day and I do. Have I enjoyed using it every day most of my life? Not really, no. I spent many years trying to find a sunscreen that didn't make my skin feel bogged down and greasy. And then obviously with a reapplication of sunscreen, if I'm out in the sun every couple of hours, building that up on my oily skin is just not a nice feeling in winter and summer. But the sunscreens I'm about to share with you, I think have solved all my issues. I just wanna say that I'm not gonna go through the technical details of sunscreen. I do have a whole video on that. So check that out, then come back and watch this. There are a mix of chemical, mineral, and hybrid sunscreens in here as well. I'm not gonna be discussing the pros and cons. I'd highly recommend going to check out um, Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Michelle's channel, where she goes through all like the pros and cons, myth busting, the science behind sunscreen, so yeah, before making any comments about what's safe and what's not, I recommend you do your own research and come to your own informed decision. But today we're going to be talking about the feeling, the texture, and the look of sunscreens on oily skin. So let's start off with number one that I'm going to touch on very briefly, and that is Crave Beauty Beat the Sun. One of my daily use go-to sunscreens at the moment that I'm actually not going to talk about in this video because I've talked about it to death. And I'd highly recommend going to check out my Crave Beauty um, brand review if you want to know more about that. Just know that this goes effortlessly on the skin. It's super light and it's so comfortable to layer up during the day. But yes, I've talked about it to death, but my possibly favorite sunscreen of all time. So let's get into some sunscreens I've never talked about and we're gonna start off the Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence. This is SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. This is a chemical sunscreen that I thought only came out like in the last few months, but this has been around for a while, it came out last year and literally no one told me about it and I'm pissed because I've been missing out. Airy and Essence are the perfect words to describe this sunscreen. Straight out the tube, it just looks like your general lighter weight moisturizer and actually goes on the skin feeling like a moisturizer, but a very light one that you notice instantly starts to kind of just disappear. And I actually put a couple of layers of this on and my oily skin is perfectly comfortable. And also looking and feeling a little bit like an everyday moisturizer. I was a little bit worried for my skin thinking, is this gonna be a little bit too heavy? But it's not, it's just like weightless. It's very, very strange in the best way. I spent a fairly active day using this. Um, I went out for a walk, a two hour walk, um, had dinner, done some shopping after, with a reapplication, of course, a couple of times throughout the day. My skin liked it. Let's talk about a really new one that I briefly showed you guys in my uh, Yes Style uh, Korean and Japanese skincare haul. This is the Hadalabo UV White Gel. Again, SPF 50 plus PA plus plus plus. This is another sunscreen I wish I knew about like two, three years ago um, when I really started to wear sunscreen every single day. To begin with, this looks a little bit like PVA glue, you know, like craft glue that you used to use in school, but the texture is nothing like that. It's actually very moisturizing. It's got moisturizing qualities in it. So as someone with oily skin, especially in summer, I'd skip my moisturizer and just use this. This does have a very slightly mattifying effect, which I don't usually like. Um, I'm one of these people that like to look a little bit glossy and a little bit glowy. Especially with sunscreens though, that's because in my experience, mattifying sunscreens usually lead my skin to be very irritating. I'll get little breakouts and I'll end up like scratching my skin, but not with this one at all. So it does leave your skin looking matte, but but your skin feels um, nice and moisturized. It doesn't feel tight. It's got an almost primer feel to it. So if you wear makeup, um, this apparently makes a good primer as well. Another sunscreen I talk about on this channel a lot is the Cosrx Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. This is SPF 50 plus PA 4 pluses again. Another really um, moisturizing, feeling, nourishing sunscreen that is still good on oily skin. I always find that the matter I try to make my skin, the more oilier I get throughout the day. So using that little bit of moisture in the morning feels really, really good on the skin. What I love about this one is it's not a moisturizer with SPF. This is a sunscreen with moisturizer in it, if that makes sense. It's got moisturizing ingredients in. So again, you can skip your moisturizer in the summer um, and just go 
straight to using this so your skin doesn't feel bogged down with everything. Again, a pleasure to use throughout the day and layer back up. Now I've got a bit of an odd one for you. Um, this is the Misha Flash Up Sun. This again is SPF 50 plus, PA 4 pluses. So this is a bit of an odd choice for um, an oily skin one, but bear with me. This is a good sunscreen for those of you who like me like to look dewy and a little bit glowy and kind of work with the oils. So this actually has a ceramide powder in that's, you can tell by the packaging, it's kind of like um, holographic, like rainbowy. So when you put it on your skin, it has like a reflective look to it, which gives you that natural shiny glow. This does go on a tiny bit matte, but give it like 15 minutes and you find that your face is kind of naturally glowing. So this for me is an evening sunscreen. And what I mean by that is I would use it if I'm going somewhere in the evening, I'm going out at like maybe like early evening in summer when the sun's still up, but I don't have to reapply it because by the time I'm, I've been there for a while, it's gonna be the evening. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I would use this as like an evening sunscreen knowing that I'm not gonna have to reapply it because the sun has set. I say that because this isn't really nice to layer up. It gives a really nice initial glow and look, but then after that, it gets a little bit heavy and a little bit thick. But if you're going out and you want your skin to look good for an occasion, this is a good one. Sorry, very odd choice, but I like it. We have another CosRx sunscreen. This is the Shield Fit Snail Essence Sun. This is SPF 50 plus, PA 3 pluses. So whilst at the moment this isn't my go-to sunscreen, it's actually really good. I've used this three days in a row. It has a really nice cooling feeling and is actually kind of marketed as a moisturizing sunscreen. That is of course because of the snail mucin in here. The reason I don't use this every day, as I mentioned, I like glowy skin. This is quite mattifying, but again, it's mattifying without being drying and irritating. And I'm all about the shine, but a lot of oily people don't like to look like that. So if you do still want to be nourished, it's a little bit small. It's a very small tube, but this is a good one just to chuck in your bag. Next up is the Neogen Dermology Daylight Protection Sunscreen. This is an SPF 50 PA 3 pluses. Another really nice, almost hydrating sunscreen. This one really gives your skin a nice radiant, fresh look. I'm not sure if it's supposed to, and it's kind of, I don't think it's marketed as one, but this has a really um, strong cooling effect on the skin. Like I put it on and my face felt like um, someone was blowing in it, like there was wind on my face. So I could see this being quite refreshing. Um, if you're out for a long day, you're getting hot, shove some of this on, it's gonna give you a nice cooling feeling. This does, however, have some very unnecessary fragrances going on. So if you are quite sensitive to fragrance, I wouldn't use this. I'm not really that sensitive to it. It's like a very strong licorice smell. I'm not sure it's actually licorice, but there, there is a very strong smell. It does disappear very, very quickly, but you of course have to reapply this throughout the day. So that smell is gonna keep coming back. This is actually targeted at dry skin because of its hydration properties, but my oily skin did not have a problem with this on the day I wore it. I'm just really gonna quickly touch on this one because I couldn't find the full ingredients list anywhere. Um, but this is um, the Face Shop Clear Sunstick. This is actually a limited edition sunscreen um, in collaboration with Cacao Friends. But the reason I'm including this is because it's waterproof. It's like a waterproof stick sunscreen. If you're spending a day at the beach, if you're sitting around a pool, your sunscreen should be waterproof. And even then, even though you've got sun, um, waterproof sunscreen on, a lot of people suggest you should reapply coming out the water. Being waterproof, this is of course a little bit oily on the skin. You can't feel this on the skin at all. Like it's super, super light. But let's be honest, you're sitting around the pool, you're at the beach, who really cares if you look a little bit sweaty and oily, you know? But I just thought this is a good one to have in your pocket. And I love sunscreens that are easy to use because it encourages you to use them more and when you should. Another sunscreen I've discussed before is the Laneige Anti-Pollution Two-Tone Sunstick SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. So as the name suggests, it doesn't only protect you from the sun, but it protects you from pollution particles using a dust block powder. That does mean, again, it has a mattifying effect 
effect, but unlike a lot of mattifying products, it doesn't overdry my skin. That green side also helps with color correction. So if you've got red blotches on your skin, it's gonna help kind of fade those a tiny bit, enough for you to notice a difference. Again, not my go-to because I like that dewy look, but what I do like about this is, for me, applying sunscreen to the neck is always kind of annoying because you have to make sure it's constantly rubbed in. You can't see the back. So being able to just kind of like roll this over your neck and not have to do anything after um, is really, really good. Really, really simple. I always feel like I have to layer this up a little bit though. So I do do a couple of layers. Next up, the only all mineral sunscreen I'm going to show in this video. This is the Etude House Soon Jung Mild Defense Sunscreen. This is an SPF 49 PA2 pluses. I tend to avoid mineral sunscreens because we all know they're quite heavy um, on oily skin. This is a problem. And also the white cast that they're guaranteed to give you just makes my face look so much different from my neck, like a completely different color. And that's another thing is I won't use one on my neck because you have to use a lot. These don't spread easily. Unlike chemical sunscreens that are just kind of like fluid and spread everywhere with ease, this takes a lot more effort. Saying that though, at first I thought this was gonna be the same. Um, it's not. This is a lot easier to spread than your usual mineral sunscreen. Of course, you do have to um, take extra care with these to make sure you're covering everything. And this does go on a little bit white, but again, give it 10 minutes and it turns into a much more neutral color. Um, so of course, it's gonna leave a little bit of a white cast. It's a mineral sunscreen, but it's barely noticeable. So yeah, not a sunscreen I'd use every day, but if I'm at the beach, um, you won't find me at the beach. If I'm, you know, anywhere in the sun for a long period of time, I will be using a mineral sunscreen. So to finish, I got two sunscreen lip balms. The first one, of course, being the Hadalabo SPF 15 Hyaluronic Acid Lip Balm. There's really nothing special to say about this one. It's a very generic nip lip balm, very similar to like the blue Nivea lip balm, just with an SPF in. So it's a good all rounder. I'd highly recommend just because it's a very basic lip balm with a good SPF in. The next one is the UVSAT Lip Screen. This is SPF 50, so this does go on very white, um, but rubs in very, very well. Give it five minutes, the whiteness has gone. What I really like about this one as well is I use a lot of chemical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens can give you a little bit of a stingy feeling in the eye sometimes. So you have to be very careful when applying it around the eye area. With these kind of lip balms, if you want to, you can put it around the eye area um, because they are more wax based. They won't drip um, down your face and into your eyes. So this is a good one if you have um, special areas of the skin as well that are slightly more susceptible to sun damage, like on your cheeks. And you just want to cover them up a little bit if you're spending a lot of time in the sun. So two very, very good ones. Don't forget your lips. But yeah, a lot of these are new. Um, a lot of these I've seen all over the internet before um, and some of them I've literally had for a week, but I just decided to bulk order them. And the reason I know they're so good is because sunscreen has come such a long way. Chemical sunscreens have come such a long way. So these are just perfect. They're ideal for my oily skin and hopefully for yours as well. And hopefully I've inspired you to try maybe one or two of these. As always, my videos are a discussion. So please let's discuss in the comments below. So yeah, check out the playlist to my site here for more skincare videos and also the video underneath that is recommended just for you. But that is it for me now, guys. I will see you next time.